Good morning and welcome to today's video. Bit of a busy day today. Phase one, selling my bike. Just heading over to Cycle Exchange to say goodbye to a bike that kept me company the whole of last season. It's a bit sad, really. So like I said, sad day. This is the bike that's for sale. It's really a Cento 10 Pro or Cento DHE Pro if uh, you're Italian. It's pretty much back to the stock settings, uh, except for the tires, which I've only ridden a few times. Aero frame, obviously this is their most aero offering at the moment. Full Dura Ace Di2, Mavic carbon wheels, integrated cockpit. This is 90 mil, 40 centimeter. Astute saddle and all in all, very nice build. So if you're in the market for a new bike, size small, Cycle Exchange Kingston where it's going to be. So I'm here with Josh. How you doing? This <laughs> is not a normal bike shop, is it? It's a little bit different to your, uh, your conventional one. We specialize in buying, selling, and part exchanging pre-owned bikes. Uh, so that can be anything from second hand, so people have used them before, factory seconds, demo bikes, holiday company bikes, ex-race team bikes, anything and everything we have. Ex-sponsor bikes that are slightly bikes. damaged. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Had a few miles on it, one lady owner. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what we do. We've got range of different brands, everything serviced, everything comes with a warranty. So it just makes buying that pre-owned bike a bit safer for everyone. Should we have a look inside? Yeah, yeah, come on in. Yeah, so all the bikes are on display. Uh, we've got the cafe, so if you're ever out riding around Richmond Park, it's huge, it? need a stop, it's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, probably got about 100 bikes on display. And as I said, literally a little bit of everything. So down the end, we've got the, uh, the fully functioning workshop. Uh, so if you need anything serviced, um, anything looked at, you've got little jobs you want, if you're out on a ride and you have a problem, pop in, the boys down there will be able to help you out as well. Sweet. So, yeah. so bike for sale at Cycle Exchange, few marks in the frame, one season's use. Check it out, buy my bike, description down below. Phase two of today, heading to the fit studio. Bit of tweaking to do on Daisy's bike fit. Just met up with her, she's on the front smashing it, of course. <laughs> Your shoes are undone. Yeah, boys. <laughs> Your hair's different colour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you think of our office? Have you ever seen it? Quite messy. Oh. <laughs> Look what's turned up. So what are the problems you have? So after we went into the Surrey Hills, any time I like put my elbow out like that, extended it, the joint was hurting. Okay. Daisy's arms bend backwards. She hyperextends them. Mm. She double locks them, doesn't she? Is that quite a common thing? Not really, but <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's uncommon. Like um, uh, Lucy Tiny Head double locks her knees. Yes. Yeah. Just gonna put my coronavirus um, friendly, not friendly, not friendly, <laughs> coronavirus, 50 pound, gloopy stuff, alien jizz. Yeah, coronavirus, what happened to that guy? <laughs> so strong. Yeah, if you, if you drank this stuff, it would, uh, it would I'm, I'm quite lucky actually, because I stockpile it, I've got like 10 bottles of the stuff. Really? Well, I use so much of it, I touch people for a living, not like that. Clean. You start selling it. I could start selling it, I'd make a decent, decent amount of work. Yeah. Right. So just seeing if there are any obvious restrictions um, for Daisy that might be influencing a fit. So the original bike that we bought for Daisy, the look, which is a size medium, she hasn't really been getting on with. She's getting sore elbows, uh, kind of doing that hyperextension thing with her elbows and just getting sore elbows and hands and neck. Since we switched out the bike to the Villia, which is a much more relaxed geometry and it's a bigger frame as well, uh, she's having less problems. We just want to dial it in because we basically got this out of the box and then quickly put it together and kind of matched it to her old fit. So that's the purpose of today. See if we can get her even more comfortable. See what happens. Does this frame just fit her better? Yes. Look at it. it, it it's even kind of gangle shape. Quite short like that, but it's very, very tall like that. We're going to do something that we haven't done with this bike before and just kind of have a look at the position dynamically and look at it on the jig. Maybe experiment with some different saddles because I know last time when we actually had you on the jig before, we had you on an Ergon saddle. Yeah. But when we put that saddle on to your look, which was the best we could get at the time, mm -hmm. It didn't feel quite as comfortable, so I kind of feel like I'd quite like to go because you're now having issues with this saddle, which yeah. you didn't have on the look. So as the position has changed, because I feel like you haven't really had a bike that's fitted you that well ever. 
Annie did a fell lady this morning and her saddle height is 23 centimeters lower. Can you hear me out there? Hello! <laughs> What are we discovering? Everything that I've been preaching for the last two years with Bike for Tuesdays, don't rain saddle too high, because it creates, the saddle becomes this sort of penetrative entity, so it's trying to go higher. Uh, as your, you know, your pelvis and your soft tissue is braced between the bottom of the stroke and the saddle, it creates elements of the rider being thrown at the front of the bike, so you end up with, you know, we can reference numb hands, neck and shoulder tension, neck ache, all to excessive saddle height. Dropped it a little bit for Daisy. Uh, how's the saddle feeling now? I mean, can you describe it as comfortable? Uh, yeah. Still feeling that catching point that you were talking about earlier? A little bit, yeah. Okay, let's have a go at taking the saddle off and just changing it for some slightly wider. Just jump off again for me. Because my suspicion is that with your look, which was quite a lot lower, your pelvis is rolled a little bit further forward because the front end's lower. As we brought the front end up, or we put you on a bike that's higher, your pelvis is naturally going to posteriorly rotate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. All right. So what that means is potentially greater engagement with the sit bones, and it might just be that the saddle isn't offering so it sufficient support to you. So we'll try a slightly wider one, we'll try a different, couple of different brands. It kind of goes to show how much a position can influence saddle comfort, because you've been riding this saddle pretty comfortably on your look, like you weren't getting saddle issues with your, on your other bikes, correct? Mm -hmm. But you change the position, all of a sudden the saddle doesn't become comfortable. Yeah, yeah. This is your original saddle, and we've got a bit of an imbalance in pressure distribution, we're going to work through that. But this is your original saddle, which is slightly narrower. And you see how there's this kind of this pressure towards the lateral aspect of the saddle on the outside of the saddle, whereas now that we're getting a bit more engagement with the saddle, with a bit more of the meat of the saddle, yeah. and barely any pressure on the front. Yeah, so absolutely, less pressure on the front. But again, that's probably because we've dropped the, front, the, dropped yeah. the saddle height a little bit, so you're not getting that, that engagement with the front of the saddle. Yeah, I mean, I think that a long time. Try and make that middle number hit 100 for me. The middle number. Cadence. What's happening to the pressure on your hands? It falls off. Comes off. Yeah. yeah. So I guess one of the things that we have to consider here is that you won't ride at, out on the road at 60 watts, which is what you have been riding at. You'll ride at probably 150 to 200 watts. Yeah. So good, mate. what we what we want to do is try and replicate that, that power here and base the fit on that. So Daisy likes her levers a little bit up. Is that a complete crime? No. A lot of people like them flat because when you're pulling on the lever, climbing for example, it, allows, it gives you something to pull against. But I think what I tend to do is set the lever so it's got some angle so you don't have to roll the wrist. Because as you roll the wrist, you can see what happens in my arm, you end up creating or generating a lot of tension in your neck and shoulders. So actually I wouldn't ever say to have, I would never encourage someone to have the lever pan flat as in parallel with the ground. If you want to do it like that, that's fine, but don't complain when you get neck and shoulder problems. I think you've got to think ergonomics rather than necessarily tradition. It all depends where your saddle sets, surely. Yeah, it depends how high your body yeah, yeah, is yeah, up in the air. I think we want to keep these handlebars there, don't we? So we're going to see. see what, what? Do you know what stem length is on this? All done. I've made a bike even faster. I've put slicks on it. Daisy, look, you're witnessing history in the making. The obelisk is finally going up. You see, Miss Cactus is doing all right. I thought they were fake. Can I touch it? Well, it's a cactus. It might spike you. Look, a man sent us to gummy snakes. <laughs> You want some? You're not loud, are they? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Home time. Whole way home on Daisy's wheel again. She's getting quicker. Daddy! We're going to the wheat sheet. Because it's Jordan's birthday. Jordan, the owner of Giro, and my boss. Oh, well done, Henley. Oh, we got it.